Hello, Jesse Hidalgo here with Hearing Group. Today joining me is Ryan. How Hello, everybody. I'm good. How are you today? Excellent, excellent. And so we're going to be talking about the basics of the audiogram. I mean, maybe you can go through and kind of give us a little bit of an education on how to how to read this or how to interpret that. Yeah, that'd be great. I oh. think I could do that. Well, basically, um, how I kind of explain it in layman's terms is there's going to be five stages to the audiogram. So you're going to have your normal hearing and then your mild hearing loss, moderate hearing loss, shifting down to the more severe hearing loss. And then sadly, it goes down to a profound hearing loss. So when we're talking about normal hearing, what is normal? What, what is that range consist of? Yeah, so normal range consists of um, zero decibels. Okay, all the way um, down to 20 decibels is considered the normal hearing range. Once you hit 21 decibels, then you're going to fall down into that mild hearing range all the way from 21 to 40. Okay, and then what's the next stage after that? Um, after mild, you're going to have moderate. So once you hit down to 41, all the way down to 70 is a moderate hearing loss. Um, so after moderate, you shift down into severe. So there's a severe category. So once you hit 71 decibels of hearing loss, all the way until 90 decibels, you're in that severe category. All right. And then the last stage you're dealing with? Sadly, um, anything below 90 decibels of loss gets down into the profound part of the audiogram, which yeah. We can help people in that area. It just becomes more difficult with having to have power instruments. Okay, Ryan, so now that we have the severity of the losses and we can understand where a person falls as far as normal, mild, all the way down, mm -hmm. what's the next portion of the audio game that's important for us to understand? The next important part to understand is gonna be the pitch. So each frequency has its own pitch. So your low frequencies is gonna be the volume of words, and maybe your high frequency is gonna be more the clarity of words. And that's what uh, makes it so hard for some folks is that if they're falling down too much in those high frequencies, well again, that's that understanding, that right. that right? People so, tell me all the time, I can hear the words, I just can't understand them. Is there some tests that we can implement or conduct that would help a person understand that? Yeah, the very first test that we're going to do um, is going to be um, our most comfortable listening level. So basically, we just want our patients to tell us what's comfortable for them, kind of like they want the volume of their TV at home. Now, why is that test important? Well, why that test is important is we want to know um, the next testing that we're going to do. Uh, we refer to it as um, speech discrimination. Another thing people sometimes call it is word recognition. So what we do is we give the patient a list of words at that volume they chose, so as if they had hearing instruments on, um, to see how well their brain understands those words. Um, but sadly, when you go a long time uh, with a hearing loss, and especially an untreated hearing loss, your brain actually can forget how to interpret words, and so you may hear hear the word, but it's almost like it's in Spanish. You hear it, you just don't understand what's being said. All right, so how important is it for them to get the help then? It's really important. Um, you don't want it to fall because once it's gone, it's gone. It never gets any better. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, so it's kind of an eye-opener for a lot of folks, right? And so they think that, well, hey, I'm coming in, I have a problem, I have hearing loss, mm -hmm. and you're going to fit me with hearing instruments, and miraculously, I want to hear everything that's out there. Right. Is that realistic? It's not. So what I always tell patients is, uh, we can get the sound to your brain, but we can't make your brain understand it. So if your understandability has fallen, um, wherever you understand is what the hearing aids are going to help you understand. That's the most important part, right? So whatever you hear, today your speech understanding that's the part we're trying to preserve and if we can keep the brain active we can keep it busy the better the person's going to do yes is that right yep all right uh how important is it that a person go in and get a hearing test even if they don't have hearing loss or they don't think they do hearing loss? Uh, it's really important for everybody just to get a baseline audiogram um, and then keep on top of it just like a like you'd go to the doctor for a wellness check every year just to make sure you don't have a hearing loss and that it's not continuing to fall. Yeah, that's advice we give to patients in our clinic all the time. Get in there and get your annual. And just like everything else that you do, get your annual wellness check for your hearing. Right? Yep. Okay. Any other last parting words for us? I think that's it. Okay. Again, this is Jesse Hidalgo with Ryan coming to you about understanding the audiogram. We hope that you have found this very informative. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We're happy to go through and answer them for you. Mm -hmm.